Now, Tip has released the Libro. The Libro is an acronym as it's spelled on the album. What does that stand for? The legend is back running Atlanta. <laughs> now, are you a Libra? Yeah. What's the significance of that um, Zodiac to, to you, your interpretation or whatever? People know so much about Zodiacs. I just be listening. I don't claim to know nothing. I don't really know that much, man. Uh, what I do know, I know what people say. I think that, you know, I think that the position that you were in the rotation around the sun and the moon and how that shit aligns, I think that it does have some fundamental principles at birth, but then your experiences and the, you right. know, the, the lessons you learn and the things that you deem uh, appropriate to consume, like that's what's gonna really dictate and determine your characteristics and your personality for real. You know what I mean? You may still have some traits here that are similar to all of the Zodiacs, but you know, your experiences and, and the lessons you've learned are gonna be, that's what's gonna make you who you are. As it's explained, you asked me what was the Libra, like, what, you know what I'm saying, what is yeah. their characteristics? It just say, always finding balance, always analyzing, you know, constant constant search for, for truth and balance. And, you know what I mean, just putting things in different perspectives and very diverse, multitasking. And they also say uh, indecisive. Let's get right to track 12, Family Connect. Damani's mm -hmm. on here. And y'all trading yeah. bars, y'all. This is not a you did a verse, <laughs> he did a verse scenario. This is like, nah. You jump, you, you got a double dutch right into this, Dad. Well, to be honest with you, it actually was like he did a verse, I did a verse. Like, we was never in the studio at the same time. He and I were listening to Messiah play beats, because Messiah produced the track. Oh, yeah, that's dope, you know what I mean? I, I can hear where you're going with that, so on and so forth. And then uh, this track came up. And I said, yeah, man, I like that one. I'm going to do something to that. And I think Damani had in his head kind of said he was going to already do something, but didn't speak it out loud. So he looked at me. He said, this one? I said, yeah, yeah, this one. And then I left for some reason. And when I came back, he did his verse. I said, oh, so, so he's trying to he trying to get the track for me. So I said, <laughs> I said man, pull, pull that motherfucker up, man. So he thought you he was going to scare you off the track? He thought by putting his verse down, he was going to scare you off the track? No, I thought he thought that meant it was off limits or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I thought that was him like staying claim to it or something like that. <laughs> so then I go in there and I do a verse, you know. And then after that, I'm like, yeah. So hmm. Then, now we now it's like, what are we gonna do with this? And then he put another verse on there. So then I just went on and said, so I'm gonna use this for you know for my project. And when I did the fourth verse, I thought that you know I think I sat down. We sat down and listened to it together. And he said, yeah. You did that, you know what I'm saying? And I just, you know, it made me proud. No, he sounds, it made me proud he sounds that, great. It made me proud that we went from him coming to me for approval for his music, like for, for him, the standard being, if I say his verse is good enough, it went from that to him telling me, yeah, you did that. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, so watching him grow into that space and and you know and be a part of it and experience it in real time, that's, that was real dope. I want to get into uh, this this Benny the Butcher Jada Kiss record. You know, you have okay. throughout the years shown up and made sure that you you know put your your rhyme and skill set next to New York City to make sure everybody knows it's all the way official. You know, that's New right. York City is known for the, some of the barsiest rappers. Um, but right. you as a, as, a, as a Southern artist, you know, you want to make sure that the South gets its just due. Because y'all rhyme right. and rap and spit and punchline and metaphor and all of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. It just sounds different. Well, that's right. <laughs> that's right. But now, I mean, but also I want to also show that how much of an appreciation that I have of the art form and the culture which starts in New York. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're going to always stand for hours and go and, and, and represent our own. But I, I have, a, a like, an experience. I have an experience with the city. You know what I mean? During those big, big moments. You know what I mean? Like the summer that, that Wu-Tang dropped, 36 Chain. Mm -hmm. I was in New York that summer. I know what that was. <laughs> I felt that, you know what I'm saying? The summer Raekwon and them, the uh, ice cream drop. Uh, Raekwon, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was the definitely. Butter Peak and Rican's and the girls in the yeah, t-shirts and all that. Yeah, I've been to a Puerto Rican Day Parade, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've been to Rutgers, I've been, yeah. I've been to Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? Like, like even the Osh when when Craig Mack dropped Flavin' Your Ill, 
Yeah. And then on the remix, Biggie, that's when we was introduced to Biggie on the remix, outside mm -hmm. of the mixtapes, of course. Like, yeah. I was there for that, so I understand the energy, right? However, I was in Atlanta for even more monumental moments that, that I, so I could, I could kind of culminate those together and, and, and represent both, you know what I'm saying? And, and do my thing where both, both parties can appreciate and I think an ability to do that, bring the two together, you know what I mean? That, that, that gives a certain level of respect uh, on behalf of Atlanta, getting that from New York and that's showing New York, well, okay, well, it's some, it's some respect down there. And I think New York rappers that we relate to, like Jadakus, like Benny the Butcher, like that's the that's the bridging of the gap that we need, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what we set out to do. I think we did a pretty good job of it. You know, we see you all over Atlanta uh, and any other place where you feel like your voice can support the movement of police reform, uh, addressing police brutality, getting people out to vote, making sure black communities, uh, the solidarity and the focus is there. Well, if I could just make one interjection. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Not necessarily police reform, because I don't think you can reform something that was meant to oppress in the first there place. You go. It has to be dismantled and rebuilt, you know what I mean? I think you gotta wipe the slate clean, you know? No matter how great of a policeman the best policeman may be is still fruit from a poisonous tree. There it is. Because it, com it comes from a place that, you know, was meant to oppress and, and, and enslave. Well, and the type of trauma that it does to the individual on the receiving end of that behavior. Absolutely, absolutely. So with us knowing that, we need to move forward. That's why I say dismantle. You know what I mean? You got to have better checks and balances, man. I think if you're here to serve and protect the people, then you need to be held accountable by the people. That's right. You know what I mean? And so that's why I say it ain't no real, I, I, I don't see how you can reform it. You kind of have to dismantle it and rebuild it. Oh, and we did it big with John Legend. Now, this obviously yeah. ca caused a, a, a stir over the last several days since the album dropped. Man, I'm just, it, I'm just hearing about it. <laughs> I'm just hearing, I ain't it, listening, I'm just hearing about it today. So going back to 2015, Meek Mill and going back and forth with Drake said, you let T.I.'s homie piss on you, and everybody was like, what the f Hey, listen, and, and, I, and I shut all that shit down. I didn't, because I don't want to be a part of, you know what I'm saying, something that was a harmless incident, like a harmless Well, mistake. you shut it I down back then, too. Yeah, 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 I shut it down. I don't want it to be weaponized against nobody. And I and when I said it right now, it wasn't the victimized cuz. It was like, yeah, that shit happened. And I was pissed off in my partner when it happened. Well, see, that's what I thought you were saying in this song, was that y'all been through a lot together, you and your friend, and his irresponsible behavior, including this incident. The wildest shit I've ever seen before in my life, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't had no malicious intent. Now, you do know that, you know, these blogs and all this shit, they gon', you know what I'm saying, they gon', they gon' flip it however. I don't see how it could ever be taken as a, you know what I'm saying, like, like as a diss. I don't see how it could be. That would be somewhat uh, allowing their emotions to manipulate them, if so. Well, the, the song is fire, it's got John Legend on it. Right on, man, yeah, hey, and, and the incredible part about this is, I recorded the song I, probably a year and a half, maybe two years ago, right? And I just, you know, just had it and listened to it on my own, in my own reflection. When I was in my session with Ross, Ross heard that song and said, hey, who on there? Who was that singer? <laughs> and at the time, it was Rico Barino, Fantasia's brother. He wrote the hook, and I told him who he was. He was like, man, he sound good, but you know who you need on there? You got to get John Legend on there. That's the... <laughs> Man, you got to do the, the you need the, the white piano with the all white with the smoke. Man, this is white doves. Like this is <laughs> this is huge. You got to do that, bro. And I was like, okay, John Legend it is. Let's call John and see if JL can get on here. We reached out to uh John and and I was in um Turks and Caicos, like uh, away for my birthday. They sent me the record and he done it, right? So I was like, dope. But then on my way back, like, you know what I'm saying, like as I chimed back in, reacclimated myself with what was going on in the world, I saw he had his own tragedy that he was dealing with, you know? Mm, that's right, that's which, right. Which made the, the record, and I don't know whether he did it like before or during, or I, I don't know, I just know that it made the record mean so much more to me, the fact that he, you know, he chose to, to 
I guess you could say share that moment. Yeah, man. Yo, sending love and blessings to John Legend and his whole family too, because that's tough, man. That's very hard. Absolutely. My heart goes out to him. And I mean, you know what I'm saying? My family, we, we, we lost a child too, just like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, in mm. 2006 or seven, maybe seven, I had to actually wheel my baby down and put her into the coroner van. Man, that's a tough emotional pool, you know what I mean? And that's why, mm. that's why I really don't give a f about sh anymore. I think I'm kind of numb to a lot of because I've experienced the greatest of the great in the world, and I've experienced the worst of the worst. I try not to be moved by much of it either way. Man, God bless you, brother. Man, you too, bro. You know, it's a big album for you as a dad, man. This is a real marker. When, you know, you, the story you shared with about you and Damani working on this record, what you just shared with us uh, about Deja, getting to that point of knowing how to use her tools and her, you know, Wonder Woman belt, you know what I mean, and her superpowers belt. It's so incredible because this is true for all all of my children, but let's just talk about the three that are on the album. And, Messiah, you know, Damani. Messiah, De Damani, and Deja, right? As a pops, as a father, as a, you know, I see an evolution, like, you know, being complete. Because it went from me doing everything I can, investing all of myself into them to make them better, feeding their spirit with information, with discipline, with, you know what I mean, to make them better. And it went from me pouring into them, this is an example of them pouring into me to make me better. You see what I'm saying? And with Deja specifically, all my coaching her of, you know what I'm saying, how to kind of control her emotion, not allow herself to, you know what I'm saying, fly off the handle and just pop off unnecessarily and just how to kind of, you know, just process the things that she experiences because she can't control her experiences. Like, that's her thing. Like, why is this happening to me? You can't control what happened to you. You can only control how you receive it and how you respond to it. To her teaching me, when we were going through Hyman Gate, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was, like, it got to a point where I was like, man, but why, why are they? And she's like, yo, you don't have to, you know that we okay. You know, like, why is you, you don't have to respond to that. You don't have to be caught up in that. Going from me pouring into her to her pouring into me and watching us improve each other or, or being, or witnessing, being aware of, damn, now she's improving me. She's, so I, I got her to a place where now she can get me to a place. And the same thing with Damani and Messiah. It's just dope.